In this video lecture, I want to uh, explain how you can use what's called a piecewise linear um, model to represent an otherwise nonlinear device. So the nonlinear device that we are using or exploring here is one that has a VI relationship according to this expression here. The voltage is equal to five times uh, the current cubed. And we've looked already at methods of solving this uh, otherwise linear circuit, but the nonlinear element really uh, throws a damper on using typical uh, linear circuit analysis. So in the approach uh, that we're going to look at now, we're going to actually model the nonlinear device as a composite of, of linear um, elements and sources. So uh, let me go to this uh, graph, which is the VI, it's the voltage of the of our nonlinear element versus the current. And we're going to step away for a moment from uh, the circuit in which this element is uh, is placed, and we're going to just look at the element itself, just at its terminal characteristics, voltage versus current. And we're going to ask the question of if we were to re replace uh, this curve with a straight line, where would we want to place that straight line? What kind of intercept and what kind of slope would we want? So I have this uh, line here, and uh, you might say, uh, let's, let's put a line that, that, you know, looks like this, you know, would that be an appropriate approximation for this curve? And the answer would be, well, it depends on where you're going to be uh, operating this device. So w when you take this nonlinear device and you put it into a circuit, at, there will be some current flowing through it. What will that current be? Will the current be around 0.6 amps or is the current going to be around 2 amps? So if you know something about the typical current value that that element is going to experience once it's placed in the application or circuit for which it is destined, then you can come back and uh, make a better selection of, of a simple uh, linear approximation of that of that model. So if we were going to, let's say that we were going to operate right around um, let's say 6, mm, let's say 1 amp, okay, 1 amp. So if we're going to operate around 1 amp, then you might say, well then let's pick this straight line to uh, have a slope to be tangential to the curve right at one amp and to actually intersect the curve at one amp. If we used uh, this type of a line, then if we were operating right around one amp uh, in the circuit application, then this model would look pretty good. But if for some reason the, the conditions in that circuit changed and the uh, current now was closer to 0.75 amps or 0.5 amps, then the model would would fall apart. So the first thing to note about this piecewise linear model is that it has limited utility. So, um, and I mentioned piecewise, it's called piecewise linear, meaning that in general you could have uh, multiple pieces of straight lines that are all placed together. So if I go back to uh, our little notepad here and I draw the our IV curve. And let me extend the vertical axis here. And let's draw a, uh, a straight line. Okay, let's say we wanted to intersect, we wanted to follow this line here. Now the question is what kind of a circuit actually produces this type of a of a VI characteristic. Notice that it actually does not cross zero. It's not like a line that goes through zero, right? So strictly speaking, this uh, element that we're going to put in here in place of our nonlinear element for the purpose of analysis is not, strictly speaking, a linear device. But it's got a straight line. So what kind of circuits elements could we use to make this up? Let's say this intersected here down at minus 9 volts, okay? And let's say that this intersected here at 0.5 amps. Okay. Then, um, and this device, which we don't know what it is yet, 
is going to replace our nonlinear element. Okay, so if no current flows through this device or into this device, uh, it has a voltage of minus nine volts. Minus nine volts. That means there's got to be a voltage source in here. So I'm going to put a voltage source, and that voltage source is actually uh, minus 9 volts. I'll put 9 because I, I labeled the plus and minus signs accordingly, so we get um, minus 9 volts at the VX terminals. Okay. Now, if we, if we uh, push 0.5 amps into, the, uh, into this element, so if we put 0.5 amps, then at that point we measure what? 0 volts right because it intersects right here so we get zero volts so if we started with minus nine and we actually now go to zero that means we've accumulated nine volts somewhere and that somewhere is going to be through a resistor that will actually be equal to nine volts over 0.5 amps or in other words 18 ohms okay so the way that we model uh, a line straight line uh, <clears throat> that crosses our nonlinear curve uh, somewhere other than at the origin is by virtue of using a voltage source in series with the resistor. Now you could do source transformation and do a current source in parallel with the resistor. You could do that as well. So um, what will happen is if we replace our circuit now with the same Thevenin source, but now we have a resistor and a voltage source that approximate our nonlinear element. We'll call that Rx and Vx, uh, Vsx, I'll say. We still have Rs and Vs. All right, now we can find the current Ix is very simple and straightforward to find. Ix is equal to Vs minus Vsx divided by Rs plus Rx, which for the parameters that we have would be 10 volts minus, we said this was minus 9 volts, right, divided by 18 ohms, sorry, Rs, uh, 5 ohms, I think I had 5 ohms plus 18 ohms, so that would be 19 volts over 23 ohms, okay, which is somewhere around 0.8 something amps. Okay, so the usefulness of, um, of using a straight line is that we can replace it with a resistor and a voltage source, and then we can solve it using our linear circuit techniques. Now let's go back to our, our graph here, and let me adjust this if it crossed at 0.5 and let's say by one it must be at plus nine so it, oops no, no no don't do that um at one amp it must be at plus nine there we go okay so that's the that's the curve that we just fit now notice that uh in the way that i drew it here there are actually two points where the straight line crosses over the nonlinear curve Right, we're somewhere down here around three volts, and somewhere up around uh, seven volts or so. And so, if we were uh, wanting to operate this source or this nonlinear element over some range, right? Typically, you're going to want to operate an element not just at a singular point, but maybe you operate at a singular point, but then uh, environmental parameters change and although you're supposed to have a 10 volt source it sags the 9 volts or it goes up to 11 and the question is how does the current change so you want to pick a straight line that is going to uh, minimize the current over whatever range you're trying to operate over so let's say that we were trying to operate over a current of 0.5 all the way up to 1 amp okay, you notice that here down at 0.5 I have quite a bit of error so I could move my line up. If I moved it all the way up to to actually be exact at 0.5, now I've got more error in between. And if I did the same for um, you know no error at one amp, you know now at the extremes I have no error, but in the middle 
I have um, more error than I need. So what you do is you typically split the difference and you move it uh, somewhere where there's going to be some error, more maximal error, in the middle of your range at the t and at the two extremes. But overall, you have minim min minimized the uh, the maximum error that occurs over whatever operating range you choose. Uh, this can be done, you know, mathematically. But here we're interested just doing this uh, graphically. So you just get a visual on it and you say, okay, this line looks pretty good over this 0.5 amps to one amp range. Um, it will it will do an adequate job within so much uh, percent error. Um, and speaking of percent error, what you might actually want to do is make the error less, the absolute error less, down at this lower end, right? Because the current is smaller. And uh, then allow a little bit more at the, uh, at the upper end, because there that would correspond to smaller percent error. So, but that's the basic idea. Now, what if you uh, modify the circuit uh, or the environment of the circuit changes such that it turns out that the current flowing goes down below 0.5 amps, it goes down to maybe 0.25? Well, in this case, or in the case that I had here, uh, if you went down to 0.25, the model would actually tell you that the current, the voltage that the model puts out, Vx, is now actually negative, right? And negative 4.5 volts, which is clearly not right. So this goes back to why we call this piecewise linear. What we're going to do is actually we're going to split the model into two pieces, or split the overall IV curve of the nonlinear device into two pieces. The first one will be a straight line, as described before. The second one will be a horizontal line, like this. So we have put two linear lines together, and so the the curve that we're using is uh, linear. Uh, in pieces, okay. So we can um, we can say then that uh, our model is going to be as follows: that Vx will be equal to minus nine volts plus eighteen ohms times Ix for currents Ix greater than 0.5, and otherwise Vx is going to be equal to zero volts for Ix less than or equal to 0.5 amps. Right? And then the question comes up, uh, if you have two possible models for your uh, device, nonlinear device, then which one do you choose when you, you do a circuit analysis? So let's just work that out. What we'll use is the technique called solution by assumed state. Okay, solution by assumed state. When we create a piecewise linear model for our nonlinear device, we basically have two states, if you will, for our model. It could either be in the state that exists when the current is less than 0.5 amps, or it could be the state when the current is greater than 0.5 amps. And the actual topology, right, the, the values of the elements uh, for our piecewise linear model change. And so we have to pick some values when we do analysis of the circuit, and we have to pick one or the other. So let's, uh, let's solve the above, the, the above circuit here, where we say we have 10 volts, we have 5 ohms, and now I'm trying to find out what is, uh, what is the current flowing. Now, I either have this resistance here, Rx, is going to be, let's see, Ix, will either be 0 ohms if Ix is less than 0.5, or it will be 18 ohms if Ix is greater than 0.5. Right? And similarly, uh, call it Vsx, is going to be equal to 0 volts if Ix is less than or equal to 0.5 amps, and it will be minus 9 volts if Ix is greater than 0.5 amps. So what we'll do is let's assume that Ix is going to be less than 0.5. You just guess. Now hopefully you can make an educated guess. I've intentionally here made a bad, bad guess because I want to show how um, if you choose the wrong thing, you can still solve the problem 
accurately, properly. So if we assume it's less than 0.5, then that means Rx is 0, okay, which means we have a short, and Vs, Vsx is also 0, okay? So Ix now is simply 10 volts over 5 ohms, which is 2 amps. And, but, Ix is greater than 0.5 amps, therefore, we chose, or we guessed wrong, we chose the wrong state. So now what we will do is we will repeat analysis, but this time assume Ix is going to be greater than 0.5 amps. All right, and of course, if that's the case, then we have not a short, but Rx is going to be equal to 18 ohms, and not 0 volts, but minus 9 volts. All right. And now when we solve for Ix, it's going to be 10 minus minus 9 volts, total voltage, driving, the, uh, driving current, divided by 5 ohms plus 18 ohms, which will be 19 volts divided by 23 ohms, which is somewhere around 8.5, 8 8.2 8 amps or so. And Note, Ix is greater than 0.5 amps, which agrees with the conditions for this piecewise linear state, or for this state. All right, we picked the state that corresponds to when Ix is greater than 0.5. So had we guessed better, we would have solved this initially and never had to solve the initial one and find that we had picked the wrong state. But either way, you can arrive at the proper solution. Okay. <clears throat> so there is no, just to be clear, there is no exact piecewise linear model to pick okay, for a given nonlinear IV curve. It all depends on the application. So if you're given a problem to solve, you would be given the nonlinear IV curve, and then you would be told, uh, you know, derive or um, propose a, a, a two-piece, uh, piecewise linear model that, um, that best fits the, uh, the device over a current range of whatever, 0.5 amps to 1 amp, or over a voltage range of 2 volts to 10 volts you'd be given that in the problem and then you would basically pick um, the, the, uh, the appropriate um, model. And unless you were asked something specific like uh, ensure that uh, minimize the, the maximum percent error uh, over that range, if you're not asked for something specific like that, you're basically just doing a visual, um, picking a reasonable model uh, that visually uh, looks like it kind of spreads the error out over the operating range for which you are trying to create the model.